Hey there, I'm Ryan Zrama, a longtime roguelike enthusiast, uh, going back to my days of making quick basic and free basic games, but a first time entrant to the seven day roguelike challenge. I've been aware of it for some years, primarily thanks to entries that I've enjoyed from Slashy. Uh, and I decided this year on a whim to give it a shot myself. Starting on Friday, I gave myself three days <laughs> to uh, try a roguelike for the Playdate console. And as you can see from the screenshots here in my entry, it's a, it's a lo-fi, one-bit um, screened device that is essentially a, a quote-unquote modern handheld console uh, with a crank on the side uh, as an input element aside from just the D-pad B and A buttons. So they, uh, the developers um, have released a game engine and scripting language called Pulp that you can use to create simple adventure and story-based games for the play date. Although they have, of course, a full SDK and the ability to, to you know, use a full programming language. Uh, I wanted to challenge myself to just write a game using Pulp. And that's what I have here. So you essentially have um, the ability to uh, edit the game's metadata, uh, customize the font, create any number of rooms as needed to create your game including you know the card that's used to launch the game a menu system if desired and the the game levels you have the ability to lay exits manage your player uh, including various um, animation frames that you can have auto animate or animate yourself more likely so you can have things like a arrow for menus a normal character for moving around on the screen and other sorts of symbols you can create any number of sprites, items, and world tiles. These also can have their own animation. They can have their own scripts associated with them. When you collect an item, AKA walk on top of it, like when you collect a treasure chest, I say, ah, shinies, and increment your chest counter. Uh, with sprites, you don't have collect actions, but you do have interaction actions. So if you were to uh, bump into a skeleton on the map, uh, it's going to call the uh, the player's attack function and a lot of other code besides baked in there. Uh, but there are some interesting limitations that I had to work around in order to make this work. Oh, sorry. There's also an audio editor for both um, music and sound effects uh, and then a full-on scripting interface with some basic uh, validation uh, in browser, which is pretty nice, uh, although it can be a little annoying if you know that you're going to come back and fix code and want to remove your focus from the editor. It will force you to fix it before you do so. Um, but at the end of the day, like this, this is a, a language kind of a, I don't know, a facade on top of Lua. And um, you only have globally scoped variables. Sprites do not have any sort of local variable. The best that I came up with as a workaround, even though I didn't get to use it this time around, would be to use uh, copies of the animation frame. If you say want to track how many hit points does a skeleton have left, well, start it on the final animation frame and decrease its frame uh, each time it takes damage. But for the case of my game, I just made every monster only have a single hit point. Uh, but I did, you know, increment other variables on the player object, such as its uh, uh, shields count that will, um, you know, determine how much damage you can take before the last hit will kill you. Uh, I won't belabor the point too much. Let's actually just dig into the plan because the, the pulp browser editor has an emulator. Uh, the emulator will load the game up. It will uh, retain your game state. Uh, you can use the controls on the screen if you want to, just to see how that works. I'm going to reset my state here and launch a new game. And you can see, uh, in addition to the um, the, the arrows and uh, the D-pad and the buttons, I can undock my crank and control that as well. And if you look at, there's a direction indicator on the lower left of the screen. Whenever you move, you're, that, that gets updated to the direction you've just moved. But when you're standing still, you also can use the crank, and this works on the device too, to change your direction so that whenever you attack with a sword, it will always attack that space that you're facing. Uh, now, skeletons in this game actually cannot be killed by the sword. So if I try to bump into him, I'm going to get a miss, and then he's going to actually hit me. So I took some damage there. In order to kill skeletons, I'm going to have to go collect an axe. Now, each subsequent level is going to randomly 
place um, weapons, chests, and shields for the player to collect. Uh, so you may have to switch back to a sword in a future level in order to attack the insects that are wandering around. Uh, you can press B to sit tight for a minute. And whenever I swing the axe, you're going to notice that swinging it actually attacks all of the squares uh, orthogonally related to my character. Uh, collecting the skull that it leaves behind is one of the primary means of uh, increasing your score in the game. The other is collecting those treasure chests. I'm going to come get this chest hiding out up here. And as you can see, after 40 turns, a portal appeared. And that portal is where I have to go to advance to the next level. Uh, but the longer I wait to advance levels, the more that portal is going to spit out invincible portal demons. Uh, so this is kind of my concession to, you know, not having food. In, in typical roguelikes, your food or hunger uh, indicator is what kind of forces you or compels you to progress through levels. You can't just camp out forever. Um, so that, that, that sense of urgency uh, is important to the genre, I, I feel like. Um, it does change the strategic options available to you. Uh, so you can you can choose to hang out as long as you want to after that portal appears. Uh, but uh, you may not like it once the screen or in some levels the, the room that it's in fills up with those invincible portal demons. Okay, now we can see I have a spider or an insect on the screen. So I guess not a spider since they're technically arachnids. Um, that insect is going to follow the player. The skeletons all move randomly, but the insect is set up to follow the player. And that's a very basic algorithm for now. Uh, it just will try to move up, right, down, or left to match the player's coordinates. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I can get more robust pathfinding with a, with a longer period of time. But for the sake of this game, uh, it was good enough to have multiple types of monster. Notice that whenever you kill a spider with the axe, I decided that it just absolutely obliterates the insect, and so you don't get to collect a skull. So that's where, you know, if you're trying to max out your score in this game, you're going to have to play the uh, the weapons intelligently. You know, dude, which, which one do I go for? I see here, for example, I'm back on that first map, and I do have a sword in the, uh, the little runes over there on the left. So if I want to score, oh, well, okay. I have no clue what just hit me. <laughs> uh, there must have been a monster that, that I didn't see. Uh, let's go ahead and try again. Now, the whole point of this game is to progress through levels until you get to the 10th level, whereupon you'll find a scepter. And so that scepter beside my runs indicator determines if I've beat the game or not. Um, and, uh, you know, as you saw, I ended up back on the uh, initial level. Um, and, uh, <laughs> oh, man, we're going to just have to gloss over the fact that I have a, a bug here. Um, for, for some reason, uh, I... I before the competition, I did not get it to reset level one if you randomly end back up on this map. Um, in any case, the idea here is that I, I did not have enough time to do full on procedural generation of the levels, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, you know, I thought of ways to, to, to do that, such as um, having a, a, a digging character randomly move throughout the level and dig rooms. Uh, but I, I didn't get to it, whatever. Um, I, I intend to keep working on the game post-competition, so I, I can experiment with, with more uh, advancements in the algorithm here. Um, but what I did is I just created 20 different levels. And, uh, oh, look, I, I, I spawned right by a spider. I bet on that last, my last death I had spawned on top of or beside an enemy. Go ahead and kill that spider. I hate wasting the, uh, losing the skull when I have a sword on the map, but uh, there, there's next to no chance I would have been able to stay alive long enough to get the sword and kill the spider after using the axe to kill all these skeletons. I'm going to keep my um, my axe because I cannot kill those skeletons with the sword. Let's see here. It'd be fun to be able to demonstrate killing two at once, but uh, I don't want to risk the, risk the damage. I'm going to just kill them and get to that portal. So there basically there's 20 maps that I've predefined the monsters and items. Oops, dang are randomly distributed throughout them whenever the, the level loads. All right. And, uh, you know, I had some fun designing these, you know, different forms of castles, graveyards, uh, village scenes, uh, island settings, beach settings, etc. cetera. Uh, my kids really had a fun time imagining, you know, what I could do to make 
entertaining um, you know, worlds. And so on any given run, you're only going to see a random subset of the total number of available levels. Um, but you know, it's, it's the, the, they're enough to be evocative, but still leave plenty to the imagination. So my, my kids are just having a ball, you know, exploring the different uh, worlds. And you can see here the limitation of the AI for those insects. I have them set up to try to match the player's coordinates in that clockwise function. So since I'm to the right of them, even though the distance between uh, the vertical distance is greater, they're, they're trying to move right into that wall. And of course they can't. As soon as I come left, you'll see they will eke their way toward me. But we'll just go ahead and dispatch them, collect the uh, remaining chests. Um, I, might, I might need to get to that portal sooner rather than later before those demons start showing up and blocking me off. Yeah, we'll just go for it. Uh, depending on the level that you're in, it actually can get quite challenging when those demons appear um, because there are some levels where you don't, you know, the, the portal could spawn in a very tight space. I don't know if you noticed too, just a second ago, I, I, because there's this limitation of the pulp where you don't have the ability to store local variables, I couldn't really store what tile the, uh, the monster sprite was erasing when it moved. So as a concession, I basically just restrict the uh, the sprites to only appear uh, or move on the white background. Uh, that makes it easier to just, you know, I, I can, ah, oh, poop. I can assume, <laughs> this is gonna be tough, that, uh, that whenever I'm, oh, don't kill me. Okay, oh, no, I couldn't, I couldn't eat through. Oh no, I did, but I think I'm dead. No, yeah, yeah, I died as I was, as I was entering the portal. Um, I basically just can assume that whenever whenever the uh, the monster moves, whatever it was on needs to be replaced with the white background. Uh, not a concession I'm proud of, but what I think was necessary um, given the limitations of pulp. Uh, now I, I've seen some crazy stuff in the play date forums um, where people are really pushing the limits of what you can do in pulp, including like full platformers. There's a full uh, Zelda-like called Resonant Tail that even had like subtile movement by abusing the, uh, well, not abusing, clever, cleverly, let's go for it, cleverly utilizing the uh, animation uh, and then doing manual uh, frame advancement. Uh, that was all pretty cool. Um, and I, yeah, I look forward to experimenting with this more myself. So I think, you know, the ne next steps are really to uh, to get more content in the game. So specifically more monster types, actually, wanted to, uh, had prepared a bat to to throw in here uh, and then the bat was gonna be able to move two tiles at a time uh, and um, I would compensate for that by introducing a, a bow and arrow weapon that could shoot it from a distance um, you know to try to try to head it off now as you as you progress through the levels the uh, the the rate at which the portal demons appear increases, the total number of monsters per level increases, um, you know, really try to ramp that difficulty up. And one of the things that I decided was I, I don't really get constants that I can use. Oh, look at that. Uh, the the uh, chest spawned on the black region where it's not supposed to. Um, but I, I realized like, I, my, my game script that initializes things when you first open the game uh, can basically be used to uh, um, set up the the various constants the algorithm will use. So you know how how many monsters should be drawn per level. Uh, what should the what should the uh, frequency of getting replacement shields be versus uh, additional chests or uh, weapons? Uh, I'm screwed. There's no way for me to get out of here. Uh, basically, because that spider. Oh no, I can just yeah. See, because that spider is is one tile away from me <laughs> uh, and he will not move left to get around that corner. Uh, all I can do is skip my turn, but you can see he's not gonna come toward me. He wants to he, he wants to move up first. But of course, as soon as I move down to get out of the doorway, he's going to eat me. <laughs> and the wound has proven fatal once again. All right, last run here. And then I'll, then I'll wrap this, uh, this uh, review up. Uh, my son actually did manage to, uh, to beat the game after several plays through, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, notice I, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, move up there because 
uh, if I if I had taken that skull, the spider would have attacked me. Um, so you know, it's, this is this is a, this is what I would call a primordial roguelike. There's not that much complexity to it, but it still has you know the the, the, the roguelike classics, right? You have turn-based movement, strategic gameplay. You know, you, every every run is theoretically beatable. Now, obviously, I you can end up in weird situations like I did in my last run where the luck of the draw on the level kind of screwed me. But even then, you know, well, that's why you don't make stupid mistakes earlier in the runs so that you preserve your health for situations just like that. Um, so, you know, it's, it's typically going to be yet another stupid death in here. Not, um, not an unwinnable scenario. Difficulty ramps up as you progress through it. Weapons and the world interact differently. <laughs> uh, but you know, there, there's more that I could do. So for example, uh, pulp does have a menu function um, and it, it wouldn't be a stretch for me to use the menu feature to let you select what the B button does, right? To, to use an uh, alternate weapon. And here I want to get across that bridge before any spiders come over to block me off from it. Um, so I could have, you know, introduce, you know, weapon selection. So rather than just the player only being able to hold a single weapon at a time, I could let you retain whatever weapon you get, switch between them at will. Maybe it takes a turn or something to, to do that. Um, but I also, you know, I have tiles thanks to the Oryx tile set for potions. So I can have different kinds of potions you can collect and use. There we go. I got to kill two skeletons at once. Um, but ultimately, a lot more that I could do, uh, I just didn't have time to do, um, given I started my entry on uh, Friday evening and needed to submit it by uh, Sunday evening. Uh, still, this was a ton of fun. Um, I got my start in programming through game development. Uh, in fact, some of my earliest quick basic games were, you know, exploratory roguelike systems. Uh, I would collaborate with a, a, a developer named Jock the Beast. <laughs> and even uh, working on a little roguelike that he made. Oh, here's one of my son's favorite level, the, the docks. Definitely want to make sure I don't get pinned in by a skeleton or a, a, uh, an insect here. Um, uh, and I did it. I let myself get pinned in because now I have to get that skull. The spider's going to get a free hit on me. Oh, well, say la vie. Uh, and so it's fun fun to have an excuse to kind of sit down and, and do uh, do another game. I hadn't. I don't think I'd made a game. <laughs> Yet another stupid hit. Hadn't really made a, a complete game. Oh, since the numbers competition, I think, in the uh, free basic community. Uh, this was a, a competition to just create uh, any kind of game with a numbers theme. And for that, I created a game called Dominionos that I actually hoped to iterate on for this competition. Uh, but again, I, I, I opted for the play dates and uh, a Domino's placement based game just was not in the cards for this <laughs> for this system. Although I you know, obviously have thought of ways to make it work. All right, let's see. I need to be smart about this. I've got a spider over to the right. He's not going to try to come left uh, until I go up. Oh, of course I took some damage there unnecessarily. Okay, kill that skeleton. Kill that one. And then hopefully I can get in there without that portal beam into the right trying to attack me on my way out. All right, we made it. Uh, I've kind of lost track of what level I'm on. Ah, but I see a shield up, so we're going to go for it and try to take advantage of some of the terrain features here to keep the, uh, the insects from closing on me too quickly. Great. Got a little more armor. That can't hurt. Let's kill off some of these spiders. Go for that chest. Um, and then let's maybe, yeah, camp out until the portal shows up. All right, I've got to be closing in. I see, I hear this is dangerous. Uh, you don't want to get hemmed in there. Okay, so we got out. That's, oh, I guess the spiders would have been stopped by the fire anyways. I've got to be closing in on the um, the maximum level here. There's the portal. Yeah, because the demons. Oh, come on. The demons are appearing almost immediately now. Let's see. Oh, we see the scepter. So there's the scepter to the top right. So can I <laughs> navigate this level and secure my first ascension? Well, that was close. 
All right. Let's see. Now I have to be mindful that, huh? I, I can't remember if they will try to attack me if I'm in that space or not. I think I'm going to, I'm going to go try to go around. I'm just nervous. Kill him. They'll be hemmed in. I see my, my demons have begun appearing. But maybe I can uh, take care of the spiders from this angle. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Um, well, shoot. Ah, but I can use the sword. No. I don't want the sword. Hmm. Huh. I don't know if I'm going to be able to ascend or not. <laughs> it would have been great as if, let's see what happens. Yeah. Dang. I was so close. I, I, I didn't have a way around it. I, I thought that perhaps I'd be able to stay on the stairs without the spiders attacking me. But uh, because once my player tile overwrites the background tile, um, the, the movement algorithm for the spiders will permit it to move on to that because uh, it, it, it checks to see uh, the player's location before inspecting the background tile and registering a hit. So there you go. My best run ever, uh, 13 chests, 34 skulls collected, but no scepter. If you do get the scepter, it adds an additional 10 to your score and would appear here uh, beside the best score indicator as a successful run. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh, I intend to, to advance this uh, further myself for sure. And just know that even if you don't own a play date, you can uh, play and create games in the Pulp Editor. And then once you do get a play date, you actually can sideload your own game into it uh, simply by exporting that PDX. So that's why I distribute the PDX on itch.io. Um, anyone can sideload it into their play date just by uploading it to their account. Yeah, you can download either the PDX uh, or the JSON to edit it and play it yourself in the emulator from my itch.io page. Thanks for watching.